So you want to grow your own food. You want to start a vegetable garden or you have just started out on this journey. Either way, you are awesome because you have taken the leap to take more control over your life, to know what you're putting into your body, to become more self-sufficient when it comes to food production lines and the availability of resources for you and your family. But this whole journey and this process can be overwhelming. So what has this got to do with me? Well, I am here to give you a 10 step journey to creating your first vegetable garden or growing your own food. And what these 10 steps are going to be are 10 separate videos that are going to cover each of the topics, which I'm going to just briefly mention in the rest of this video in detail so that you know from step one through to the end what you need to be doing, what you need to be thinking of and what you need to be planning for ahead of time so that you can be amazing at growing your own food, feeding your family and feeding those around you. So what I will do is every week I will be doing a new video from video 1 to video 10. I will link them in the description in this video. I'll also put them, link them up at the top when I talk about each of the chapters so that you can, you can easily reference all 10 in one place. And what that means is, if you have not yet subscribed, you need to do that now. And you need to push the little bell icon so that you can get notified when each of these 10 videos are going to be released. Because they, spoiler alert, are going to be awesome. It's going to be a culmination of many, many, many years of growing, of learning, of making mistakes, of sharing information with you, which I'm going to consolidate into a single series, which is oh, just going to blow your mind and make you even more awesome. So as the weeks progress, follow this link. If you want to support this series and the work I'm doing, please buy me a coffee below. I'll happily accept it. I love my coffees. If you want to, you can also join as a member on YouTube. You can give thanks. There's a little button down here somewhere where you can say thank you and make a small contribution. Every little bit helps in continuing to create content like this. So now that you've subscribed and you're going to get alerted for new videos in future, let's get into what are the 10 videos that I'm going to be giving to you to make you an epic gardener in the years to come. That's all coming next. With these 10 videos, it's important to know that it's going ranking from importance, at least from my view. So number one, the single most important thing you need to be doing, which is video one, is determining what are your goals. And even more important than what is your goals, what is your why? And what we will do in that video is we will work together to figure out what does it mean to figure out what is your why? What does it mean to have goals? How do you determine what your goals are? Why do we need to do this? Because I can tell you now from all my years of experience and seeing on groups, on Facebook, on Instagram, and all these different places that if your goals are not realistic, they are not achievable. And if we take a step into, I suppose, the business world, if we look at something like smart objectives, if they're not meeting those things, you are going to struggle. You are going to get frustrated. You are going to get let down and disappointment is not going to be an opportunity to learn. It is going to be an opportunity to get you down. That's not what we want. So video one, goals and determining your why. The second most important thing you can do, and remember, we have not touched a plant yet and we're not going to be touching a plant for quite a while still. The second most important thing is location. I'm sitting in the shade, but guess what? In summer, this is in sun. So knowing your location and understanding what you can do within the sun's arcs and determining what the seasonal sun's arcs are is going to basically depict what you can and cannot do on your piece of land or the little space that you have. So knowing what your location offers is going to be what we discuss 
in video number two. Video three is going to be about how are you going to grow? Are you going full size raised beds that are knee to hip high, depending on how short or tall you are? Are you going to be doing semi raised beds, which are just slightly raised off the ground? Are you going to grow in the ground? Are you doing market style, slightly raised, mounded, straight rows? What is going to be the way that you are going to grow your food? That's going to be the third one because once you know your goals, you know where you're going to grow, you know the location, you need to know what you're going to be growing your food in and how you're going to do it. So what we will look at in video three is raised beds, containers, in ground, as well as how do you fill those up? Do you just use sand? Do you use compost? Do you go and spend a fortune on a whole bunch of potting soil? That's all going to come in video number three. And now that you have your beautiful beds that you're going to grow an abundance of food in, there's something else that's really important. And still, we have not planted a single seed or seedling yet. We want to understand how are we going to mulch and water these plants? All too often, I hear about people that have just got so much excitement and they're plant things in and then summer comes and they just get smashed with wilting plants, bolting plants, plants that are just infested with pests and diseases. Why? Because they don't understand how soil temperature impacts what plants do. So we're going to look into mulching and also watering. What are the watering techniques? Overhead? Sometimes, sometimes not. We're going to look at why, why not? Drip irrigation, micro sprinklers, micro jets. We're going to look at all of the options when it comes to watering so that you know how to grow amazing food with the correct amount of soil cover and watering. Video five is going to be about feeding your garden. When it comes to feeding, there are so many opinions out there and that is perfectly fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cover things like Composting. Can you make your own? How do you do it? We're going to look at fertilizing. What are our fertilizing options? Do we just have to keep buying fertilizer? If so, what should we be looking at, looking for in that? We're going to look at things like worm farms and what you get from that. Homemade compost. We're going to look at root zone fertilizing as well as foliar fertilizing. Two different techniques, two different uses. So we're going to look at all around how do you feed your garden not just your plants, but also your soil, which in turn will feed your plants. That's going to come in video number five. Video six, planning your garden. And most importantly, how do we grow food across seasons, but also let our seasons overlap and transition? If you are a first time grower, one of the most frustrating things you will find is that you'll plant something in spring, will harvest it in summer, You'll plant something in autumn and you'll harvest it in winter. And you've just spent a whole year growing and you've got two harvests. That takes time and takes exp expertise and experience. And what I want to do is I want to bridge that gap with you so that we can look at <clears throat> getting rid of frogs. <laughs> so we can look at how do we plan out a planting season so we can get an early spring and as spring starts transitioning, get your autumn crop in interplanted so that you get your summer, autumn, winter, spring, and you just get a continuous cycle of crops. I'm also going to give you some references to some ama amazing planting calendars, which is just going to help you show in your area and your zone, what can you plant in what seasons. That is going to be a very exciting one and it's going to allow you to start getting your fingers dirty and get some food in the ground. Video seven, we are nearing you being a complete professional food grower. We're going to look at seed starting, seedlings, and ultimately, what is it that you need to do and know so that you can start growing your own food? What to look for in seedlings? How do you create your own seedlings from seeds? When do you start them? What is the growing medium? All of those things around You've done your planning, you know, I need to get this in the ground by this date. How do we backtrack when you need to actually start your seeds? So that is going to be video number seven. Also very exciting. 
because we're officially going to be starting our growing journey. Video eight. Hmm. I feel like this is probably going to be the one that is going to save the most frustration and possibly be the most controversial. Uh, I don't know. We'll have to see. And video eight is going to be all about pest control and prevention. Once again, the world is your oyster when it comes to information around pest control and prevention. Spoiler alert, I am going to be giving you a fully organic self-sustaining way of pest control and prevention. You're going to see things like sacrificial plants so that you have a few of a type of plant and you let all the bugs absolutely decimate one because that plant is going to send off all the stress hormones and it's going to bring all the pests and all the pests are going to be in one place and they're going to leave the other ones alone. I've seen it happen and I do it and it is mind-blowing how it works. But don't go and spray that plant because now you've killed your attractant. So we're going to look at things like that. How do we interplant things with strong fragrances with others? How do we create different layers that we distract flies and butterflies and all of those that are flying overhead? So that's going to be a very big one because if you missed that video, you can get everything right and you're going to be incredibly frustrated because growing your own food is pretty much characterized by pests and diseases. And if you do things wrong, you, you're pretty much just going to give up because it's going to be so frustrating and you are going to turn to chemicals, pesticides, all of those things, which is going to make you think, why am I doing this? So that is going to be a good one. So make sure you do not miss it. The exciting time has arrived to start harvesting your, your crops. But how do you know when they are ready? What are some of the telltale signs? How do you work on what a packet says it's 30 days, but it actually works out to be more like 60? So those are the things we're going to look at is harvesting as well as seed saving. Seed saving is a really crucial way of increasing your ability to become more self-sufficient. And you'll see a lot of seed companies actually advocating this because it just allows you to become more resilient in the garden. And also, if you didn't know, every time a seed comes into a new fruit, it adapts slightly to the climate, to the conditions, everything. Unless you are cross-pollinating, which we will cover in that. So if you have two different types of squash or butternut, you can't use those seeds because you're going to end up with who knows what? Cinderella's Kukuri. <laughs> that was really, really, really lame. Um, and that is actually a cinder, right? Cinderella pumpkin. I know. I think it's a Kukuri pumpkin. Um, Kukuri? Kukuri? <laughs> I don't know. It's a Japanese pumpkin and I'm not Japanese. Um, so those two cross-pollinated is going to give you something completely random. So we're going to look at pollination, cross-pollination, what seeds you can use, what you can't. For instance, tomatoes, they can't necessarily cross-pollinate because they have the male and female part in the same flower. So those are things we're going to look at at seed saving so that you can get your next harvest on um, from your existing one and just build up a more resilient garden from seeds that have learned through the seasons how to adapt to your specific growing condition. And then finally, that was a mouthful. The 10th and final video is all about documenting, reviewing and planning. One of the biggest mistakes beginner gardeners make is they just let their excitement run and get the better of them, which to be honest is amazing. It's awesome. I did it. I hope you did it because that's the bug that bites and keeps you going. So there's nothing wrong with it. But what this video series is going to allow you to do is just get a bit more structure with your excitement. And the 10th video is going to allow you to, after your first season of growing, take a step back and be like, whew, that was intense. Or that was amazing. Or that was an absolute nightmare. <laughs> And you can go through a wave of emotions on your first time growing your own food at home, whether it's in a single pot or it's a big garden, it doesn't matter. You can experience the same emotion. But we're going to look at how do we document things throughout the season? How do we review what the success was? What worked? What didn't? How do we start 
creating alternatives, swapping out certain beds, certain crops, and then we're going to look at planning. So if we planted tomatoes in this location that got a little bit of autumn shade when you know, we should have been ripening off some tomatoes, how do we plan that the next summer season we get them into a different spot and maybe swap some of the, the broccolis or cauliflowers that we planted in late summer into, so that we can get our, our, our winter crop into that place where the tomatoes were, as an example. So that's where we'll look at planning and how do you move your garden around based on the performance what worked, what didn't, what were the pests, what were the diseases, was there a lot of rain which resulted in mildew and rust and blight and all of these things which you can learn from for the next season so that if there is going to be a wet season you can preventatively spray something like a copper fungicide. If it's going to be very dry you can then know that you're not going to struggle too much with those diseases, you need to make sure that you stay on top of watering. So those are all of the planning techniques we're going to look into. And by the end of that, you would have watched probably a lot of content. You would have taken in a lot of information. You would have become a lot wiser. Your fingers would become not green, but a lot browner and dirtier. I don't actually know why they call it green fingers. I suppose green is growth, but you need to get your hands dirty. <laughs> the dirtier your hands are, the better the work is that you're doing, whether it's creating compost, planting seeds, pruning, and uh, anyway, I love my hands dirty. At the end of this, you're going to become your own master gardener. And that's my plan, sharing all of my knowledge, all of my expertise with you so that you can become the best vegetable gardener that you can be. And just remember, this is all about vegetable gardening. We're going to create other series around fruit orchard, fruit trees, all of those things but this is going to make you an amazing vegetable gardener so please subscribe click that notification bell so that you can get the notifications of the 10 videos that are going to launch and if you've got any questions about the content that's going to be covered if you have any suggestions or things that you want to see drop them in the comments below i would really appreciate it and i will always get back to you if you see all my other comments i respond to every single one so thank you to everybody who is supporting this journey for all your comments, your words of wisdom, and just your awesomeness in the garden. And until next time, I can't wait to share this series with you and get you to learn everything that I have learned over the seasons that were and the years that are to come.